You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with my good friend Vito DeFrancesco from the band Pyramid Theorem from Toronto. The, I, my, my listeners of the show might remember my previous conversation with Vito where I talked to him about his band's album Beyond the Exosphere, and I highly recommend people go check out that conversation and go check out that album. You can't get much better when it comes to progressive metal in Canada. Pyramid Theorem is up the, at the top of the cream of the crop. So if you want, go definitely go check it out. But I'm not going to be talking about music today with Vito. Today we're going to be talking about something maybe a little bit more controversial here in Canada. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Freedom Convoy protests that happened recently in Ottawa because Vito was there, and I'd like to ask him about what he saw and what he thinks about it. Vito, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome back to The Pit. My pleasure, Derek, man. Thanks again for reaching out. I'm happy to be back on here shooting the shit with you. <laughs> Since this is such a controversial conversation that we are about to have, and with the culture nowadays about the anything about that could be uh, misinformation, I mean, mis- misinformation is being likened to terrorism. So I want to make sure I tread carefully for this conversation. So my first question has to be: Are you now, or have you ever been a Russian bot? <laughs> Da. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Niet, niet. Uh, <laughs> niet. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm I'm uh I'm full-blooded Canadian with Italian roots and uh no no Russian terrorism in my heart, man. <laughs> None of that. Just the true-blooded Canadian. Uh and so once you saw this protest start happening in Ottawa, what made you decide that you weren't afraid to participate, you weren't weren't afraid to join in and go raise your own voice? Um, well, I guess my, let's call it my journey starts well before, uh, well before Ottawa, we're pretty much right when this all started back in, actually, we're approaching the two year mark very, very soon. Essentially, I'll give you just a little backstory. I am, even if you listen, you mentioned Beyond the Exosphere, our record, which we recorded prior to all this COVID stuff. And we ended up releasing it during COVID just because when we were about to release it, all this stuff happened. So we had to stop. And that album is pretty much what is happening now for lack of a better, uh, a better explanation. So let's, let's rewind two years ago, March, I think 15th, it was, or 16th, Doug Ford, our premier of Ontario goes on the news and says, this is the essential list of things that are going to be open two weeks to flatten the curve see this list and it's like 35 pages long and every single person that i'm aware of is on this list everyone's an essential worker apparently so that was the first thing that made Vito say you know what i gotta i gotta see something something's not right here So slowly but surely, I started to do some research. I had, it it was a point where I had like two weeks, three weeks worth of my own data where I was looking at at the news and and calculating all of the the death rates, how many people got infected, what was the percentage of these people that are passing away, what's the ICU. So I had two, three weeks of a, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that I was looking. And after three weeks, it's the same data that they were giving to everybody, but they were using fear. I was using common sense. I'm like, okay, 98.9% survival rate after three, four weeks of this thing. Probably not too bad. Long story short, they, you know what I do have to say too, though? They did get to me. The, the propaganda did get to me for a little bit. For two, three weeks, there was a point where I was like washing my hands nonstop. I started getting scabbing. So they did get to me. I can't, I can't take full credit. But, but it came to a point where like everything that they were doing, man, it, I don't know about you guys over there, but in Ontario, some of the stuff was just head scratching. Like I could walk into a store on the left side of the aisle, I could purchase a water bottle, but then on the right side of the aisle, I couldn't purchase underwear. How's this stop the spread? I don't understand. And then, you know, let's not even go down the rabbit hole of, of I did my due diligence research on all the masking that it was all bogus got into conversations with people and, oh, you know, I was a conspiracy theorist. I was a wacko. I was this, I was that, everything under the sun. Turns out two years later, all this stuff that I was, you know, uh, misinforming people about turns out to be true. So the information is out there. And honestly, that's the best advice I can give someone. 
do the research. Google is your friend, even though they hide some things, you could still find what's out there. Same thing with all the social media, the Instagrams, the, the Facebooks. Yes, they are keeping everything quiet or trying to, but the information is there. And that's what it is for me. And that, that was all before Ottawa. So let's fast forward a couple of years. Um, January 27th, I believe, was the first day that the Freedom Convoy touched down in Ontario. They were at Vaughn Mills, a very large, uh, like, superstore, big, big outlet mall right off the highway, pretty much across the street from my house, which is pretty funny. So I had, I had to go and check this thing out. I heard rumors, like, a week before it was starting that, you know, the truckers are starting a, a protest. And not, not that I was um, skeptical, but I just wasn't sure how big this thing was going to get. So following it on, on social media a couple of days before, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to Von Mills and check it out. And when we got there to see them off, there must have been 25, 30,000 people there. I've got footage for days. Lots and lots of people, donations, people bringing in food, money, blankets, uh, you name it, hats, gloves, socks, all these things that were, were going to be heading to Ottawa. And then that night I go to CP24, the, the, the holy grail of news in our country, or at least in Ontario. And they say, oh, there's about a thousand people here. And, and like, I'm like, you guys, come on. Like, how can they lie through their teeth, man? And, and, and after two years of research, I can understand why they lie through their teeth. And it's because they are funded $1.2 billion. The CBC is funded from government funding. So clearly they're going to be pushing some sort of agenda with someone who's paying them, you know, here, here's $1.2 billion, but you got to say what we say and nothing else. So that's how it, it all started for me. And then initially on the, I believe the first day was January 29th. That was the first day that the, the convoy touched down in Ottawa and a friend of mine who we've also been going to these protests in Toronto for about a year and a half. So this wasn't our first rodeo. So essentially what we were supposed to do was we booked one night initially in, in Ottawa. That turned into four nights because as the days kept going, we saw this thing grow and grow and grow. So we went from staying only the one night to staying four just because of the sheer magnitude of this thing. And when we got there, it, I, again, I've got footage. I don't know how much you've seen or not on my personal page, but we were like a hundred kilometers joining the convoy in our cars with our flags a hundred kilometers away from Ottawa was when we saw our first overpass over the highways. And there must've been like 50, 60 people in the middle of Pemptville, wherever the hell that is. <laughs> so, you know, we keep getting closer and closer, more and more people. This one overpass, like 25 kilometers away had like, a thousand people with a big crane and a giant flag saying freedom. It, you know, I'm getting goosebumps right now, just, <laughs> just reliving this moment. And then when we touched down in Ottawa, the noise of the horns and people yelling, it was absolutely phenomenal. And I was so glad that I got to experience that. And, and again, we were only supposed to be there for one day, which it got extended for the first weekend. Then the next weekend, guess what? They're still there. So fuck it's my duty to go back i'm not a reporter but i chose to be a reporter for this whole thing because the news was not telling the truth and that was the for me being in the middle of this thing seeing the ter the terry fox statue as an example with all this love on it from people giving flowers and flags and hats to the media saying, oh, that's, you know, that's discrimination and, and this is wrong and these people are racist and this and that, you know, let's, let's go back to the swastika flag that everyone keeps talking about and the, the, the Confederate flag. I saw one of them. All right. And I was there one, I saw one out of, I don't know, I'm going to say the first week and there's probably 700,000 people there from those three days. So you tell me, man, you know, even if it was the truth that there was some racist people there, it was such a small, 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 small percentage that it, it, you can't lump everybody into that category. You can't. And that's exactly what the news was doing. They kept talking about that same friggin' image circulating for four, five, six days 
no other people were there being racist. Like I said, I was there and I experienced it with my own eyes and ears. And that was the most shocking thing, man, being a Canadian and, and being in the trenches as it were. And then getting back from, from uh, Wellington street, the parliament Hill, going back to our Airbnb and turning on the news and seeing what they're saying. I'm like, huh? So it, it didn't make sense to me, man. It was, it's quite shocking and it's still going on, which is even, I guess not more shocking because now that I've gone down the rabbit hole, I can understand why they're, they're covering everything up as best as they can, but people are starting to wake up, man. Long story short, it's two years of baloney. And finally, now we start to, to get the little crumbs of freedom back, as I like to say. Growing up a local of Toronto and growing up so close to the nation's capital, I'm sure you've witnessed many different protests happen around Parliament Hill over the years. But have you ever seen anything of this magnitude? Um, never, never something like this, because, you know, it's funny, they, they threw the word unprecedented around a lot early on in the pandemic. Rightfully so. I don't think the planet's ever shut down, at least not in the last hundred years. Uh before the last pandemic, which I believe was the Spanish flu. So this was an unprecedented convoy. It, it shattered world records, like I think three days in or something. The other one was in Egypt, and it was like six or seven kilometers long. I think this one reached uh, 29 kilometers at its longest point near Saskatchewan. It, maybe even longer, and I, I don't remember the exact amount of trucks uh, that were there but I personally my first day there I spoke with a gentleman on Wellington Street in a truck from Quebec and I said to him I said sir thank you so much you know what we really appreciate this you got to hold the line hold the line and I said to him I said how many trucks are are around here like did you have any idea and he goes we lost track at 19,000 and that's that's just the first day in the area of Ottawa now, you've got to understand, I don't know how much the news was saying, but they closed off a whole bunch of roads leading into Ottawa, and it should have been more, but they knew it wasn't a small fringe minority, like our prime minister said, even though that's what they were telling the media, they were working behind the scenes to close off roads and different areas, uh, different streets into Ottawa. So when he told me that there were 19,000 trucks in and around the vicinity with more coming, I knew that this thing was going to get out of hand and as big as possible. And then you started seeing all these pop-up protests all around. Then they shifted to go to Windsor, the bridge over there. And we all know what happened in Coots with the, the border between Alberta and uh, I believe it was Montana. Then the other one sprung up at Winnipeg. Another one sprung up at Fort Erie in Ontario. So all these things started sprouting, uh, not worldwide. Well, actually we did, we did, <laughs> start something worldwide but at first it was just uh nationally in our, in our country and you know from from coast to coast you just saw the people it was it was okay to have a different thought process that's what i found very interesting about this you know before the convoy started we weren't even allowed to discuss forget forget it's okay to discuss we weren't allowed to even have the thought process of you know, maybe these vaccines, uh, these mandates aren't justified. You know, maybe the masks don't work. Maybe the government is overreacting a little bit. No, if we said any of that online or in a, uh, in a community circle or whatever, I can't tell you the backlash I got from even like friends of mine. So, you know, when, when your prime minister is, is blatantly on television saying, and I quote, uh, what was the quote that he said back in September? Vac unvaccinated people take up space and we as a society must learn or figure out if we should tolerate these people. We should figure out if we are going to tolerate somebody based on their personal medical decision, whether or not we're going to tolerate these people. That sounds pretty familiar. Uh, a man with a, a little mustache <laughs> about 75 years ago that sounds pretty eerily familiar and one of the adages that came up to me recently because of doing all this this research and information is i love this little saying history does not repeat itself but it rhymes fuck man when that when i heard that one for the first time in a long time i'm like you know what it, it's so true they're gonna try and do something but 
It's a matter of how they're going to do it. Things change a little bit, right? So yeah, the, uh, get back to your question about this, this protest, nothing like this has ever, as at least to my knowledge, forget in this country, but on this planet, this, this sparked something. Cause I, I'm sure you've, you've done some research as well. It sparked convoys all the way across in France and New Zealand, Australia, which was getting hammered even worse than we were and, and are still getting hammered worse than we are. So it, it sprung up a whole bunch of different, movements across the country and and you know what i was very um let's say i i wasn't proud to be canadian for a long time the last couple of years and you know what right when this convoy thing started and i felt it forget through a screen i felt it in my heart in my body i would hug people slap hands with people sing with people that i don't even know who the hell they were but they were there and we had the same mindset of you do you I do me, leave me alone and let's live in harmony. So that was the main goal there. And, and when I, when you like live it and breathe it, cause again, I was there for four weeks. It, it was something else, man. That's why it doesn't do justice through a screen. That's why I, to, to your point, I had to keep going back to Ottawa because if you're not there, you're going to believe what they're telling you on the news. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. And like one of the many things they kept telling us on the news was that there was a lot of vandalism going on and desecration of uh, 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 national monuments. Uh, did you witness any vandalism the entire time you were there? Um, if you consider people shoveling snow vandalism, picking up garbage after our parties vandalism, feeding the homeless vandalism cleaning the terry fox statue vandalism shoveling the tomb of the ancient or uh shoveling the tomb of the unknown soldier which was done by veterans no <laughs> there was zero vandalism that i saw nothing if anything the streets were cleaner there was a stat going around that ottawa saw 90 percent less crime that month 90% less crime. Sure, there's no crime going on when half a million people are congregated playing hockey and 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 getting hot chocolate and cooking and man, I can't tell you, bro, like everywhere you looked, if you were hungry, didn't matter if you were homeless, had a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, or were there working, it didn't matter. You were eating for free because people were donating hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, soup, drinks, Gatorade, clothing. You could walk around. We got hot chocolates. I saw people there with those uh, little hand warmers, people handing out gloves, socks. Like you can't, you can't make it up what was going on there unless you're the mainstream media. Then you can make it up and apparently get away with it too, which is even more mind boggling. But yeah, man, it was so, it was so crazy to see people like loving each other again after two years of what seemed to be absent in this world. So it really did open my eyes, man, being down there. I felt rejuvenated and patriotic again, proud to be Canadian again. And that's what it took. It took getting away from all this bullshit and, and feeling people's love. That's what it took to be like, oh, you know what? Fuck, I'm proud to be Canadian again, man. And then it sparked everything all across the world. And, and now I'm even more proud than I was last month. So something to be said about human interaction, that's for sure. And, and what did you see as far as terms of the demographic? Because, I mean, if they're trying to paint it in the mainstream media as this being a white supremacist thing, it didn't really make sense to me immediately because I know that the majority of truckers in Canada, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're Sikh, they're Hindu, they're everything. It's, it's, it's every creed, every, every background. So what did you see as in terms of demographics, in terms of age and background? I saw anyone who was over the age of 90. I saw people who were... Um, under the age of two I saw a lot of toddlers and everything in between I saw black white brown you name it there were people of all nationalities all races all age groups all demographic all different ethnicities all coming together because we are human that's what it's all about I don't see okay of course you see color like I see color but I don't see color when i'm discussing these things with people i see a human being and you know when they're trying to paint this all as white supremacist misogynistic racist like man give me a break trudeau what the fuck are you smoking then 
like, oh, dude, I know you're laughing, Derek, man. And like a small part of me is laughing too. But this guy's a fucking clown. Yeah. Pardon my French. But yeah, just, you know, like I, I can't, I can't understand it. And there, and there's this one video, hilarious. It was very, very early on. I'm not sure if you follow uh, Rebel News. Yes. They're yeah. a, a big news outlet. And they had this one counter protester there. She was all masked up like this and, you know, head down. Just you could barely see her eyes. And she said, F your white supremacist movement. And right when they show that sign, it pans to the left and you see a Sikh individual. I am not a white. I am here for freedom. It doesn't matter if you're blue, black, white, brown, whatever. This is about government overreach. Justin Trudeau has gone too far. And that's what it's about. There's a Sikh individual there. How can this man be racist or a white supremacist when he's not even white? But, you know, they don't show that stuff on the news. It's all selective programming. And that's what even me with such a small, small platform, if I could reach one person and make that one person say, you know what, let me do my own research and so on. You can create a ripple effect that just keeps growing and growing and growing. And I think that's what two years of, pent up anxiety did for all of us with this freedom convoy right it it gave us an outlet where we're not alone where you know what we can speak up and not feel shunned by society and and all these different things that the government and the the media are trying to do to to paint a line right down the middle of our country and you pick a side instead of you know well let's work together man that's how we're gonna get out of this mess and and that's essentially why I, I wanted to be there as long as possible. And we were there until the very, very end. I was there till the very last night, actually to the, to the very next morning, uh, which was, I can't remember the final day. Everything's a blur because it happened so quickly, but I feel like it was two weeks ago now that that was my last day in Ottawa. Another thing that we keep hearing in the news was how it affected local businesses. And I've heard like the counter of that saying that actually a, local, a lot of local businesses had a huge uh, uptick in business because there were so many customers. And then I heard the opposite where people are blocking businesses and store owners are having a hard time. Did you talk to any store owners? Did you witness any businesses? Uh, I spoke to one store owner. Well, he wasn't at his store. He was a store owner who came to the actual uh, protest and he said, man, business is booming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to your point too, they, there were a lot of businesses did choose to keep, keep closed. Right. Uh, the one that I do know that was open and I went in there with my own eyes was called three brothers. It was a shawarma place and they were ran. They were like just, just on the outskirt of the, the, the road blockade like right where the road blockade was was this shawarma place that chose to remain open and i saw footage of them i think it was the first weekend or the second weekend but again it was from rebel news i believe and there you see the shawarma owners they've got music pumping they're all dancing like filling up people's pitas <laughs> and people are inside there like singing and dancing and so so you know what if people chose to remain closed that was on them because i tell you if they chose to remain open, they would have made a shit ton of money. Way more than anything of 12% capacity could ever do. No, if you <laughs> stayed open that month of the protest, you were making hand over fist money. It's not even funny. And uh, did you see any reporters the entire time you were there? Did you witness any media reporters going around with cameras at all? Uh, there was a lot of independent journalists, for sure. Like, everyone now with a cell phone is is a journalist. Like, me as an example. Right? <laughs> um, I, I was interviewed myself by Rebel News. Uh, I, I'm not going to call them media because they're uh, not not mainstream. Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're trying to tell the truth as best as possible. Um, I personally did not see any um, mainstream media at the, the protest, though I do know that they were there because, again, when I got back from my Airbnb, which was like a hop, skip and a jump away from Ottawa, I would tune into the news and they were standing there. Uh, they were reporting and there was a couple of glimpses of hope. They were telling the truth here and there, little, little sprinkles of truth, right? Like just a little bit of a crumb. Uh, but the main story was, yeah, you know what, this is getting violent and, and, ch you know, children need to be, uh, you know, if you're a parent, you should second guess bringing your children here. 
while at the same time there's a bouncy castle being blown up 10 meters away from the camera so it's just it's 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 a joke man I, I i don't know how else to say it other than it's it's a joke and if people are 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 choosing now after this whole convoy and after you know covid is starting to mysteriously go away now that ukraine and russia conflicts happening i just encourage everybody to like do some research man don't don't take anything you say even me don't don't listen to me and oh this guy's right no i'm probably wrong a lot of the time too but but if you do the your own research yourself that's the best way to get informed that is the that's the best way we're talking about informed consent with these vaccines give me the information and i will decide for myself what is right and what is wrong because these media outlets whether they're left or right or neutral, they're all fucking lying. All of them. So in this day and age, you got to filter out the baloney as best as you can and, and try and get your own uh, side of the story, right? There's three sides to every story, they say. The right side, the wrong side, and the truth. So that's our, our duty now is to be our own independent journalists and just do the research, man. And what would you say to anyone living through all this, witnessing everything that's going on, and who's just still afraid to raise their own voice and to speak up about the things that they believe in? What would you say to those people? Um, that's, a, that's a tricky one because there's, um, it, it falls back. Like We can use the vaccine as, as an example. Now, I'm not anti-vax. I have vaccines inside my body from when I was a child, you know, in order to go to school and stuff. Um, what I am against is coercion into getting the vaccine. Now, two years ago, it was very easy for me to see, guys, just fucking say no to all this bullshit and it'll go away. Not so easy when... Uh, what's it called the mass psychosis or, or whatever the uh mass, the terminology is formation uh, right mass, mass formation, formation psychosis. psychosis which they changed the google results on as immediately as they talked about that on the joe rogan podcast <laughs> so so there you go right just another example of shh, quiet listen to us <laughs> so it you know it's easy it's easy for me to to, to say, you know what, guys, just say no. It's, it's all bullshit and it'll go away if everyone says no. You know, as we're getting further and further into this thing, we know now, or a lot of us know now, that that is the way to approach the situation. If everyone who did not get the vaccine for their health, if someone got it for their health, hey, you do you, man. You got it for your health. But when I hear other people say, you know, they got it to travel or they got it to go on vacation, they got it to go to a restaurant, they got it to go to a concert, they got it for my grandparents or this, that defeats what a vaccine is about. A vaccine is supposed to protect you, right? And, and it's, it's easy for, for me who's self-employed, a musician, not tied to some contract to say no to a vaccine. But when someone's there, you know, if you don't get this fucking shot, you're going to lose your job. D different story, right? And, and that's the whole thing, right? It, until something personally affects you, it's all hearsay, right? So it was easy for me to say no, 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 even before I did all the research. Like I was against this thing before I started doing the research on what this vaccine was. Oh, it's going to be seven shots. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it's not your conspiracy theorist. No, Justin Trudeau bought a lot of vaccines. He bought enough for seven or eight people to get shots up until 2024. And, you know, when I suggested this to some people a year ago, oh, you're crazy, bro. You're crazy. All right. Well, I'm not crazy anymore, apparently, because the science changed. But, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it, it's a touchy subject. I mean, it, it, it's easy for me to say. But, uh, again, until you put someone – until you put yourself into – someone else's shoes it, it's tough to say but you know in hindsight it would have been a lot easier if everyone just said no it, we would have been in a lot better place and you know unfortunately that wasn't the case two years later we're still 
fighting this thing and and it's not going away i i know people are thinking we're getting our freedoms back but we this trucker convoy threw a big wrench in their plans and i say they as in the people in charge of all this thing so we threw a big wrench in their plans and and it's not going to go away they're not going to give up easily so we've got to remain receptive and keep our eyes and ears to the ground and pay close attention to our leaders because they are not done messing around with us yet so I hope they are. I, 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 you know, I, I, I wish that were the case and, and I'm, I'm enjoying every little bit of freedom that's coming back because for two years I wasn't allowed to do anything. And now, you know, I've hit up the casino, lost 300 bucks, which sucks, <laughs> but you know, I'm talking about going to movies, going to out for dinner, going to a leaf game and, and, and all this stuff, TFC, all these, these things that were, um, you know, privileges, I mean, I don't think they're privileges when you live in a country here. I should be able to do the same things that you are. And, and, you know, just because I chose to do something different to my body doesn't mean that I shouldn't be able to go out to eat with someone. And, you know, it was, it was tough explaining that to some people a few months ago, but now that the narrative is starting to, to shift a little bit, now it's, it's okay to be a, a free thinker. Right. So, Yeah. Well, uh, to wrap this up, I just have to ask, is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? Um, take everything with a grain of salt nowadays, guys. It, it it's, it's insane what's, what's going on. And, and, you know, I feel bad for the people that, like, I, I'm even far behind. I just started doing the research two years ago. And, and I'm still far behind, but I'm ca- still catching up. So if people haven't done their own research the last two years, they're, they're so behind. And, I, and it's worrisome because it's not over, man. This is only going to get worse. Prices on gas and, and homes and food, it's only going to get worse. Uh, I, just take everything with a grain of salt, guys. And unfortunately, we're in the day and age now where we've got to do our own research. Up until March 15th or whatever it was, 2020, all I gave a shit about was music, food, (laughs) hanging out with buddies, and sleeping. (laughs) That was it. Now, all that shit is put on the back burner. I'm doing like two, three hours of research a day on Google, Twitter, Instagram, all these independent journalists that I'm following. I'm still not stopping. Like We just spoke before we actually went live about that the Great Reset book that I just purchased. You know, that's two years into this thing. This thing got released, I believe, in July 2020, which is a whole other can of worms (laughs) that I can go deep down with. But this thing was released two years ago, and I just bought it two days ago, and it showed up today. So I'm going to dive into that book, do a lot more reading on that. And that's something that I suggest. It's not a good start to start researching from there because, you know, I could see a lot of people who haven't been doing the research read that and be like, oh, you're you're nuts, This, you know. It'll, it'll throw their mind in a complete uh, relapse of what's happening. So I would, I would start from uh, where, where's the best place to start? Just, you know what? Follow the freedom convoy on, on, uh, on all the social media stuff. That is a good start. If you have any questions that the media might not be telling the truth or they might be misinforming you, I would start with the freedom convoy because that is the root of, of this new narrative that is seen to be being pushed through mainstream media, you know, before it started, we weren't even allowed to discuss masks coming off and lo and behold, our province today just announced that on March 21st, they are gone. So, you know, if people say that, Oh, this was their plan the whole time and the convoy had nothing to do with it. I say two words for you. Honk, honk, (laughs) not the other double H thing that they were peddling but honk honk well well put Vito. thank you so much for taking time to talk to me i'm so glad we were able to do this i know that you're a busy guy and i just hope that you keep up the good work over in ontario and i'll try to do my best here in bc because you know we haven't gotten rid of any of the requirements over here yet so we'll just have to keep working on it Uh, so take care of yourself and much love and i look forward to seeing you behind the drum set again Likewise, Derek, man. Thanks so much for reaching out and don't be shy. If you want to have another chat, you know where to find me, man. Perfect. Thank you so much. Anytime, brother. Take care and rock on, man.